Hey guys, so we're moving on to question four, which is a geometry question. Let's just read what information they've given us. It says, in the diagram, a circle having center M touches the X axis at A and Y axis at B. So basically it's saying, if you draw a line from M to B, um, it's perpendicular, and from M to A, it's perpendicular, okay? A smaller circle centered at N passes through M and cuts the larger circle at B and C. So it's basically these two points are points of intersection. It says BNC is a diameter of the smaller circle. A tangent drawn to the smaller circle at C cuts at D. So this is diameter, this is a tangent. Importantly, a tangent to a radius of a circle is there's a 90 degree there. Okay, it's important to remember that. Now, let's look at the questions that they've given us. It says, determine the equation of the circle centered at M in the form X minus A all squared plus Y minus B all squared equals R squared. So remember, if we have a circle that is centered at the origin, we have Y squared plus Y, I mean, X squared plus Y squared equals R squared, right? So basically there's been no shift and our, our, um, our center of the circle is at zero and zero. But here yeah, we have shifted, right? We've shifted our center of our circle to M. We've shifted it one to the, um, to the left and one up, right? So it indicates these shifts. So what we need to do is our A in this case is negative one and our B in this case is one. So we just have to sub that in, right? Like I've done over here, right? Just sub it into this equation, A equals negative one, B equals one. And then you just solve it until you get to this point. Okay, so it's not a difficult question. What they're just um, hoping that you would display is that you understand um, the information they've given you, but also how to manipulate the information that they've given you in order to get an answer. Okay, let's now look at 4.2. So 4.2 over here says, calculate the coordinates of C. Now, C, we know, right, is the point on both the tangent and on the circumference of the smaller circle. But it also forms part of this diameter that they've given us, right? We know a diameter is 2 times a radius. So the distance from B to N is the same as the distance from N to C. So instead of using the distance formula here and working out what the radius is and then applying it and trying to get the coordinates of C, rather say, well, whatever you've done to B to get to N, right? Whatever you've done to the coordinates of B to get to N, do the same thing to the coordinates of N to get to C, because it's the same distance. So let me show you what that means, right? So I've said to get from B to N, I went from 0 and 1 to negative a half and 3 over 2. So my X coordinate, I subtracted a half, and my Y coordinate, I plused a half. So I've said, okay, if I apply that same logic, and I now do that for N to C, we say, well, I'm going to go from negative a half and, and 3 over 2 to negative a half minus a half and 3 over 2 plus a half. Therefore, my coordinates of C are negative 1 and 2. Okay? Again, they're asking you to display whether you can manipulate, right, your understanding of the information they've given you and display how you can go about doing this in a more efficient way than using the distance formula. Okay? Let's now go on to 4.3. Now, 4.3 is quite an interesting question because it says, show the equation of the tangent CD is y minus x equals 3. Now, y minus x equals 3 can be written as y equals x plus 3, okay? And it's a straight line. You should be, you should be able to recognize that that is a y equals mx plus c line, right? And let's now look at how we're going to get that. Because you might be saying, well, okay, well, we have the point C, right, which we've just worked out, but we don't have the point D. So how can we find out the gradients? Well, remember what I said over here about the radius being perpendicular to the tangent, right? And you should remember this little formula here, right? If you don't know this formula, please go back to your notes. The gradients of the tangent times the gradient of the radius, right, because they're 90 degrees to each other, right, equals negative 1. Okay, it's very important. So we can just work out the gradient of BC and then figure out what the gradient of the tangent has to be when multiplied by the gradient of BC to get negative 1. Okay, once we have the gradient, no problemo. Then we just sub in the point C, which is on the tangent, 
and we can get the general formula. Okay, so let's look at what we do there. So I said the gradient of the radius is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. I said c is negative 1 and 2, which we just worked out in our previous question, and b is 0 and 1, which is given. So I subbed those in, right? I subbed it in quite badly over here, actually. So, sorry, that becomes plus 1. Okay, so it's 1 minus 2 and then 0 minus minus negative 1. So it becomes negative 1 over 1, which gives me, hold a second, um, we have negative 1 over 1, which gives me a negative 1 gradient. Now, I said that the gradient of the tangent times by the gradient of the radius must equal negative 1. The gradient of the radius equals negative 1. And, the and therefore, the gradient of the tangent, right? Oh, sorry, I don't have very much space over here. I'm going to write it up here. The gradient of the tangent has to equal 1. Okay. So, sorry, it's a little bit higgledy-piggledy, but I hope you can follow. Right? So, the gradient of the tangent has to equal 1 because the gradient of the radius equals negative 1. And the, those two things multiplied together have to give us negative 1. So, I've said, okay, the gradient is 1. And now I have y equals mx plus c, right? I have this point c, which is on the tangent. I sub that in, right? And I get that c equals 3. Therefore, y equals x plus 3, right? And they can be converted into the form y minus x equals 3, which is what they asked us to prove. Okay, so that question is is an interesting one because it tests your ability to interpret and to leverage different pieces of information to get to an answer. Okay, let's now go on to 4.4. 4.4 says, determine the values of t for which the line y equals x plus t will not touch or cut the smaller circle. So we know that this circle here, okay, We've just worked that out. We've just worked that out. So it's basically saying that's a tangent. Now, you know, it says, sorry, of the, which one did it say? The smaller circle. So there's another tangent that could technically go like this, right? And that one would be y equals x plus 1. Now you could be saying, Marks, how on earth did you know that? Well, we know that the other tangent, right, if it were to go, if it were to touch um, this, this smaller circle, would go through this point over here it didn't necessarily <laughs> isn't necessarily going to hit over here my bad but it's going to go through this y over here okay so it's basically saying there's these two tangents and the small circle can sit inside right so we know that y equals x plus 3 hits there y equals x plus 1 hits there right and now what we need to do is we need to say well what does t have to be right so that there isn't so that it basically doesn't touch, so it's not a tangent, and it doesn't cut it. So it can't, it can't be smaller, right? So it can't be like going through like this, right? It must basically be much bigger. It must give it a wider berth like that. So what we need to say is, well, we know that tangents, tangents, right? The tangents to the smaller circle, okay? are uh, y equals x plus 3 and y equals x plus 1, right? Because those are the tangents that will go on either side of that radius, okay? We know that, okay? So now we need, we need then t to be less than 1 or greater than 3 because that would mean that it's on either side of those two gradients. So t has to be greater than 3, or t has to be less than 1. That way, it will never touch or cut the smaller circle. Okay, that is quite important. Okay, so that is that. Okay, I hope that meant one makes sense. It's literally saying, if we have these two tangents that touch the smaller circle, what is going to be something, how can we make sure that it doesn't touch the smaller circle? Right, so we find out the tangents and we say, okay, on either side of the tangents. Okay, let's now look at 4.5. So 4.5 says the smaller circle centered at N is transformed so that the point C is translated along the tangent to D, right? So C 
is basically becoming D over here. Okay, so we're taking the circle and we're taking it chip, 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 chip down here. Okay, so it says calculate the coordinates of E, the new center of the smaller circle. So now what we're going to do is we're going to do very similar to what we did for, um, which one do we do it? The coordinates of C. Okay, we basically talked about if I'm moving C to D, right, whatever that shift is, that's what the shift is going to be from N to this new E over here, right? Whatever shift from C to D is the same from N to E. So we're going to say C to D, right? So C we know is negative 1 and 2. And D we know is, right, we know that it's 0. Um, no, sorry. We know that it's 3 and 0, okay? You might be saying, okay, well, sorry, negative 3 and 0. How do we know that, right? If we sub in um, 0 into the tangent line for y, okay, then x equals negative 3. So that's just to help you get to d, right? Because d is the x-intercept of that tangent line. So we have that. So we know that the shift is negative 3. 2 and negative 2. Okay, so that's what the shift is, right? That's how we get from there to there. So if we want to now get from N to E, we're going to go from negative a half and 3 over 2 to negative a half minus 2 and 3 over 2 minus 2, which gives me negative 5 over 2 and negative a half. Okay. So that is basically what we're doing there. And that is our point E. So again, it's one of these questions where I don't want you to use like the big distance formula and all these sort of things. Just think about it very logically, right? You're shifting, you're shifting C to D, right? So that shift is going to be the same for every single point on that circle and for the center of that circle. So then just apply that same shift to the center of the circle. Okay. Cool, let's go to our last question. So 4.6 says, if, if it is given that the area of the quadrilateral O, B, C, D, okay, this drawing is now very ugly, so now I'm going to use this drawing over here just so that we can, um, maybe you can use this, hey, this drawing. I know I haven't used this one much. I've used the one in the question paper because I'm not being marked like you guys, but remember to display all of your working outs here. So A, B, C, uh, O, B, C, D is this. What did they say it was? They said it was a uh, quadrilateral. And they're saying that the area is 2A squared and that A is greater than 0. Show that A equals square root of 7 over 2 units. Okay. So now what we need to do is we, we, and we can say, okay, this is not the easiest thing to find the area of. But we can split it into shapes where it is easier to find the area of it. Okay. So I'm going to split this into two triangles and I'll show you what I'm doing. Okay, two triangles. Now, what I've done here, right, is these two triangles are both right angled. This one's right angled because it's at the origin, and this one's right angled because it's a tangent and a radius. So I can just use the area of a triangle, which is half times base times perpendicular height. Okay, so let's just do this one first. So I'm going to call that one, and I'm going to call that two. So... 1, the area equals half times base times height. So it's going to be half times, what's the base here? Um, it's going to be 3, I think. But, sorry, this is negative 3 and 0. I'm just going to put these points in here. What was C again? C was, oh, we worked out C now, negative 1 and 2. Okay, so my base is 3. Okay, my base is 3 there and my perpendicular height is 1. So it's going to be... 3 times 1, so it's going to be 3 over 2. Okay, and then my area of the second triangle is going to be half times base times height. Okay, then what is the base here going to equal? Um, we might have to work this out. I think I might need to work this out using the distance formula, to be honest. Uh, yeah, I think I am going to have to. But my height here is... Oh, am I going to have to work, use the distance formula here as well? Mm, yeah, I'm going to have to use the distance formula twice. It's not ideal, but we can do it. Okay, cool. Let me just find the distance formula for us. Okay, there's the distance formula there. 
okay? So I'm gonna do C to D and then B, uh, C to B, okay? So C to D distance, okay, is going to be, okay, uh, let me just write the points there. C is negative one and two and uh, D is negative three and zero. Is that correct? Perfect, okay? Make this point two, make that point one. So we're gonna say negative three minus minus one all squared plus zero minus two all squared, which is uh, negative three uh, plus one. So that's two squared plus two squared, okay, which is eight squared, okay. Then let's do the distance from C to B distance. Um, let's just put B here. B's coordinates were zero and one. Okay, zero and one. So let's put that in. So this is gonna be two now again. I'm gonna make, I'm gonna keep C, B. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep C, one. So again, we go zero minus, minus one all squared plus one minus two all squared, which gives me, sorry, gives me one plus one, which gives me root two. Okay, so then over here, it's going to be half times square root eight times square root two. Let's put that into our calculator. 0 0.5 times square root eight times, oops, times square root two, and that just equals two. Okay, so now um, I do not have any space. I seem to be very bad with this whole spatial management thing here. I don't know how you kids do this. Okay, so now we know that the area of both of these together, right? So of one plus two equals two a squared, right? So we say, well, two a squared is going to equal three over two plus two, right? which actually gives us seven over two, okay? Now, let's just work this out. So we know that then a squared is gonna equal seven over four, right? Which means that a equals square root of seven over two, okay? And let's just see, what did they ask us to, to, to work out? They said, show that a equals square root of two. There we go, so then a equals square root of seven over two units. Okay, so the trick here was one, to see that you could split it into two different triangles. There's different ways you can split it, right? You can go look that um, up in the memo if you want. There are other ways. I showed you the way that is simplest and most obvious. Um, then what you do is you use your distance formula to get some of your distances there, right, for that second triangle. Then you say, okay, we know that those two triangles added together equals 2a squared, and then you just solve for a. Okay, so a little bit, I mean, there were some tricks here, but actually a really nice question. Okay, hope that was helpful. Let's go on to question five.